I'd like to call the Flint Board of Education special board meeting to order at 5 p.m. Board members, as I call your name, please reply present for the public record. Vice President Wright. I think she may be muted. Oh, yes. Do I do that or does Monica do that? No, you do that. Okay. So, Treasurer Green. Present. Secretary Ramsdell. Unmute yourself, Betty. Yes. Trustee McIntosh. Yes. Trustee Strozier. Trustee Perry. Board members absent, Trustee Strozier and Trustee Perry. At this time, the board will hear any comments from the public. Public members that have joined our meeting remotely are able to submit their questions through the question section or may send an email prior to the meeting. Members of the public are reminded that the Board of Education, by its bylaw 1370, are not obligated to answer questions, make statements, or commitments in response to issues raised by the public. In general, such issues will be referred to the Superintendent for Investigation, Study, or Recommendation. At this time, I'll ask even if there are any comments from the public. I know it may take a moment for review, so I will pause to give time for the public to finalize submitting their questions. Good evening. There are currently no questions at this time. Just a reminder to the public that you can submit your comments to this email, fboe at flintschools.org. We will read submitted comments at the next board meeting. Thank you. Ms. Washington, if you'll begin the Human Resources Committee. Ms. Washington. I apologize. I thought I had unmuted myself. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon. Um, I seek your approval to approve action item 1.6, final non-renewal of administrator's employment contracts. So moved. It has been moved and properly seconded that we approve action item number 1.6, Final non-renewal of administrator's employment contract. Is there any discussion? Yes. Ms. McIntosh? Are we speaking on the administrators that we discussed previous, previously this week, earlier? Ms. Washington? Yes. And that includes, okay. Are we doing this as a vote for uh, all, or are we separating these out? My request is that we vote on each one individually. Did y'all yes. hear me? Yes. Yes. Oh, I'm, yes. I'm in agreement with that. If we have to, or make a motion, or how do we do that? I think it's just by request. Okay. Ms. Washington, do you want to present them individually? Um, sure. Okay. So um, the first individual uh, as included in uh, Appendix A of the board packet is Administrator um, Matthew Lane. The information board. or the email or I'm something? Sorry. I'm sorry. Can I hear you? I'm sorry. Did we ever receive, because he, he chose to do his, did we ever get what we were supposed to get from him to make a decision? For Mr. Lane, yes. There was also, yes. There is a, um, the information that was communicated was the reasons for performance. And so those were provided to uh, the board. 
how do you get to more complex things? You know how every different um administrators did a presentation or um yes, he, this, uh, maybe I missed something. This administrator chose not to appear before the board. Right. So he said he was gonna do something by email or something, right? Or no? That was one of the other administrators. This administrator did not indicate that he was going to appear before the board or submit. So he did not submit anything. No. Vice President correct. Wright. Um, you know, I I have the same concern that I have had all along, and that is that I have an issue with the performance and reorganization and this economic necessity being combined as a reason to uh, not renew these um, administrators contract. I think that the economic necessity and reorganization is, is an entirely separate issue from the performance in which they can be um, released for either reason, but it, it really kind of, um, I, I just have don't think those two things should have been said together. And Ms. Green, um, Mr. Lang chose to send some information to board members individually. I assumed he had sent it to every board member because I spoke to a couple board members that he had sent information to. Did you not yes. receive anything from him? I didn't. I, I, that's why I'm sitting up here so long. I, I, it was a email. I wonder if With, he sent it to an in-person email. I'm sorry. I wonder if maybe he sent it to an incorrect email for you. Um, Cause I believe oh. he sent something individually. He didn't copy every board member. He sent mm -hmm. it individually to everybody. Um, so I wonder if he attempted to send it to you uh, in error. Okay, that may be the case. I just don't recall getting anything. Okay. Can anyone hear me? Yeah, now we can. Yeah, um, can, can anyone hear me? Yeah, they're they're responding. Oh, oh okay. We've been having a problem getting in. That's why I'm just making sure I can hear. So. Ms. Perry, are you aware of where we're at currently? What's the discussion? Then, Ms. Washington, do you want to fill Ms. Perry in? Yes. So uh, we are. Uh, there has been a request to separate the administrators out who have been recommended for. Uh, non-renewal of contract. And so they are being presented one by one. Uh, the first presentation was Matthew Lane, uh, current administrator of uh, Flint Junior High. And so there was some discussion uh, regarding information uh, provided by Mr. Lane. Oh, okay. Thank you. And then um, if you just joined, um, Ms. Wright had concerns about performance being combined with economic necessity of non-renewal. Um, so that was part of the discussion before we voted on any, anything currently. Oh, okay. Thanks. So now that everybody's back up to speed on everything, um, is there any more discussion about uh, Mr. Lang's vote for non-renewal? Seeing no further discussion, I will do a roll call vote. Can Board you, members, as I call your name. Um, oh, hold just, just a second. Hold just a second. I'm trying to get um, Blake on the call. Just a second, please. Sure. Carol, you must be in a different spot. I don't see my picture. Yes, Ms. Wright, I'm I'm I'm, I'm being extra late. <laughs> and I feel like being caved in, so I'm okay team. I have Blake on. 
Like, do you, uh, do you have any? Uh, no, at this time, no. Okay, there you go, so, the President. You're good now. Okay, so board members, as I call your name, please say aye or nay. Vice President Wright. This is regarding Mr. Lane, correct? Correct. The non renewal for Mr. Lane. Yes. It's a yes. Treasurer Green. Okay, just so I'm clear, we're voting whether we want him to come back as the principal at the middle school. We're voting, Ms. Washington. Ms. Washington, will you kind of uh, re explain just so everybody's clear? Yes. Um, so the vote tonight would be if um, the uh, administrator's individual employment agreement would be terminated ending June 30th, 2020, or renewed for another school year, based upon the reasons stated in the letter of non renewal. So, yay to renew, nay to not renew. No, the reverse. No. Okay, that's the right. So, yay is a non renewal, nay is a renewal. So, Treasurer Green? Nay. Secretary Enzo? Yay. Yay is to non renewal, right? Correct. Yes, nay. I mean, yay. Yeah, yeah. Wait a minute. Wait, y'all tank. Can we start off? Can we start over? We must y'all write it down. I'm gonna write it down. Approving of what she has presented to us. Wait a so, minute. Excuse me. Okay, Casey, one more time. To renew is a what? Nay. And to non renew is a yay. So if you vote yay. That's to terminate the contract. Okay. All right. So, yay okay, is so the contract. Correct. Yay is to terminate the contract. Okay. Okay. Let's try this again. Vice, Pre Vice President Wright? Yay. 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 Treasurer yay. Green? Yay. Secretary Ramsdell. Hey. Trustee McIntosh. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Trustee Perry. Yay. Yeah. Trustee Strozier. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a yay for me. The motion passes 7 0. Ms. Washington. Would you like for me to? Yes. Yes, President Lester. The next uh, administrator uh, recommended for termination of contract uh, is. I'm sorry. Uh, Richard Robart, current assistant principal at Southwestern High School. Is there any discussion? Seeing no discussion, the vote is on the motion to non-renew Rick Robart's, Richard Robart's contract. I'm going to do a roll call vote. Board, pres, um, board members, as I call your name, please say aye for non-renewal or nay to renew the contract. Vice President Wright. Nay. Treasurer Green. Yay. Secretary Ramsdell. Yay. Trustee McIntosh? Nay. Trustee Perry? Uh, you said to say I or what? I want, I don't want it renewed. So which one is that? That's a nay. I. What's no, that? if you do not want That's it renewed, if you do, if you do not want it renewed, then you would say what? I. Trustee Strozier? Aye. It's an aye for me. The motion passes six to one. It should be two. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Five, five to two. two. Motion passes five to. I'm sorry. 
Thank you, Vice President Wright. Ms. Washington? Yes. The final administrator recommended for non-renewal of contract is Donald Whitman, current principal of Eisenhower Elementary. Any discussion? Board President? Yes, Mr. Strozier. Uh, just theoretically speaking, if Mr. Whitman is not at Eisenhower, uh, do we have a succession plan in place for that site? Ms. Washington? Well, we will or be. Or Mr. Uh, the one who would. So uh, there is a plan uh, to reorganize as well as to um, recruit and hire for uh, new administrators. Okay. Thank you. But I will. Uh, okay. No. Well. No. Uh, go ahead. I off. just wanted to say. Um, I just wanted to uh, provide the opportunity to defer to Superintendent Stewart if she wanted to add any additional information. Stewart, you're on mute if you're talking. Thank you. Um, I was trying to unmute myself, but it had to be unmuted from the other side. And so at this point in time, um, there will be a vacancy, there would be a vacancy at Eisenhower. And so the position would be posted. Um, I spoke with Cassandra um, earlier this week about the timeline, and so um, it was shared that once the board made an action on tonight, then the post the position could be posted as of May 1st, and so the position would be posted and we would have to hire someone to fulfill um, that position at Eisenhower. Okay. Thank you. Secretary Ramsdale. If we're going to post a position, I, I'm going back to Mrs. Wright's point. We say here that uh, economic necessity, and then we post the position right away. Are, are we are we treading on thin ice here with uh, uh, saying that it's economic necessity, and yet we're posting to hire someone new? I, I think we should um, take the wording and all of that into consideration here. I, I may be, if, if you don't agree with me, that's fine. I'm just pointing that out. Mrs. Washington, um, did you seek legal opinion about the terms used for a reason? Absolutely, and also those are the terms that uh, are in accordance with the revised school code. Okay. Vice President Wright. You know, I, um, you know, I hate to, um, you know, I try to learn from things that I've experienced and uh, we have had situations where, um, we had an issue with something that an employee did, and then we did a non-renewal of their contract, and that employee won a lawsuit against us because, you know, arbitrators view those things being put together as arbitrary and capricious, and so um, that is why I have been so concerned about separating any issues of, of uh, performance from our need to reorganize, because I know how that could be viewed in a legal setting. So, um, you know, it, and, and I say that because we've experienced it, you yeah. know, and, not, and not a long time ago, last year. So that is why I have the feeling I have about having the performance included in the same uh, documentation as our need to reorganize. Those are two separate issues. They should not be given 
on the same piece of paper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if we need to reorganize, we need to reorganize. If they have a performance issue, they have a performance issue. Those two things are not in any way related, but we put them together, which makes it look like they're related. So uh, that, that's just, you know, how I, I see that. And, and it's only based on recent experience. Mm -hmm. And you know, it may be legal. Um, I'm not even questioning the legality of it. I'm questioning how arbitrators and, and, and tenure people think. <laughs> um, which yeah, is, so. excuse me for jumping in, but it, which has made uh, it me, uh, uh, you know. Excuse me, excuse me. Um, that is why I was, that that thank you. That is why I was uh so fighting it so adamantly in our previous uh meeting because we are treading on thin ice and we just got we can see a little light at the end of the tunnel and it looks like to me by not dotting our eyes and crossing our t's because in the court of law those things do matter. Okay. Yes, we are the board and we make decisions here, but if they carry it further, we have seen how it has been costly for us to not do our due diligence. And that's the same thing I said in the other meetings when I request, requested additional uh, information, because when you snowball all those things together and we end up in court, they are gonna look at all the information. And I just don't wanna keep costing this district money when we can go that extra mile and handle our business it's just a matter of a few weeks uh documentation i think at this point it is detrimental for us to make sure that we cover our fronts and our backs and um just to go along with what miss ramsdale and miss rice said i just don't see how we can honestly say we're doing that but you know that's just that's it I'm is there a green so we need to ask ourselves, are we voting for non-renewal based on economic necessity or reorganization in spite of what we feel about the performances? So with that being said, I, I'm with Mrs. Wright. We need to make some adjustments on this. No matter what it says somewhere else, we need to adjust ours accordingly because I think we are setting ourselves up for trouble. Um, I'm not sure if the what we're voting on when it says reorganization does it give any more information connected to the reorganization piece or is it just that only the finder well the reorganization um was was based upon the uh proposals that were provided to uh the board in regards to the district uh reorgan reorganizing or consolidating schools as well as a reorganization uh at central office to best position staff that will support schools based on um any movements okay so does it say anything in addition to it does it elaborate on the reorganizational piece that's written I understand that's what we based it on, but does it have anything else that kind of explaining exactly what that means? What does reorganization mean? Or we just said reorganization. There's not a narrative within the letter, but what was provided uh, previously to the board that talked about what those different scenarios and assumptions will, will look like is the reorganization that was recommended to the board. Okay, I remember that. I just wanted to, okay, thank you. Secretary Ramsdell? Um, it would just seem to me at this point, we have the paperwork to back up poor performance. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Yes, okay, so why don't we go with what we know we have the backup for? And, and there's no question about it. You have the paperwork, it's all settled. I, I think we are getting into muddy waters with this because even when we talk about reorganization, whole lot of issues ago and we don't know where we're going yet with that so uh, that that would just seem to me that and i don't know what kind of letters you sent to them and, and i'm really i apologize for bringing this up sooner i should have uh, but, uh i'm glad mrs wright did but if we have the paperwork to support poor performance and it's documented i i would be much more comfortable and I think it would be correct to go with just for 
because that can be documented. So Cassandra, even though all of all three of those things are listed for a reason, and if the board makes action tonight, the final notice that you give to them on tomorrow, could it just say performance and not list all three of those? That's correct. Okay, yeah. so if, if it is the board's desire that it just states performance, I am hearing that their final letter that they get tomorrow after board action could just say performance. Um, and, and, and nothing will need to be adjusted from board action tonight with them having the three reasons listed or would it still need to be adjusted cassandra i'm not sure i understand the question if the board takes action tonight to vote on non-renewal for the reason of performance then the final based upon what was raised regarding the concern of reorganization and economic necessity uh due to the district's current state then mm -hmm. yes, if that action is taken to not renew the contract for performance, the final letter will only state the reason of performance. Yes, that's what I was saying. Yes. Okay, so as it looks right now, we have uh, Vice President Wright, we have Treasurer Green, we have Secretary Ramsdell, and then Ms. McIntosh, did you also have your hand up as well? Okay. Um, so I'll. I'm, a, I'm going to assume that Trustee Strozier and Trustee Perry have something to say as well. So we'll just go down the line as I call your name, say your piece, and we'll go from there. That way everybody can kind of just stay stay in line. So Vice President Wright. Um, my thinking is that the board, there would have to be a correction in the board uh, packet as well. Um, and I will say again that um, if we have reasons why these personnel should be released for performance, reorganization doesn't even matter to them. So that's why I'm saying that those two things should not be listed on a letter to them nor listed in our board packet that way because that puts, puts us in legal jeopardy. So um, that's all I have to say about that. Treasurer Green. I'm not I don't see exactly what Mrs. Wright is saying. Um, I'm not sure about the legalities of it all, but for me, um, if somebody's performance is poor, that will require reorganization, in my opinion. And I'm not sure if that protects us under that umbrella of those two components, economic um, necessity and reorganization. But for me, if the performance is poor, reorganization definitely is required. So like I said, the legalities of it all, I'm not 100% sure. Secretary Ramsdell? Um, I, I think what we should do is go back and make a motion that we uh, list performance. And Ms. Green, to your point, uh, of course, if we release somebody, there's always mm -hmm. the organization, you know, uh, just for that individual. If you release somebody from being principal, then you're going to reorganize and hire a new principal. But the reason we're letting them go is before performance. But I think we should go back and make a motion that uh, the reason for re release is poor performance and, and leave it at that. And then it, the letter that would go out just eliminate the other two things. Right? That's, that's my feeling. Okay. McIntosh. Okay. And then if we reword it, all those things that uh, Ms. Wright said, but we said reorganization due to economic situation. So that's different. Oh. That makes it a little different, I would think. And to go along with that, you're talking about some 10 year people. So if you're reorganizing in any capacity, then it seems like you have to talk to the union and you have to look at seniority and a whole bunch of, you know, when you're letting people go and you're listing whatever reasons the facts have to support the heading. And I think we tripping ourselves up trying to, I think we need to sit down with, with, with legal and discuss those because like comes back to that report we were talking about previously this week. If two administrators uh, investigations that are supposed to be one are not the same, then that's a problem. 
So we we starting to get several little problems because we have several different scenarios and we do have this pandemic situation going on, which is forcing us to deal with things a little differently. So I, I think we need to go back and list it properly, everything, whatever the reason is. And I think the evidence that um, was presented needs to be looked at seriously. It's just as you said that, and then you yay it, if it goes to court and the evidence doesn't support your yay or your nay, you can still get sued. Just because you yayed it or nay, it don't make it right and legitimate. We have to be legitimate in whatever we're listing. When you get to talking about performance, if we say economic situation, then you need to address the union because that means you probably have to look at it. For, but some of these people are tenured. That's all I'm saying. So I, I just, we got to be very careful. Thank you. Trustee Strozier. Yes, everyone. Um, I, uh, I, I remember Mrs. Wright actually brought this up last year uh, during the non-renewals. Uh, I was hopeful that it would actually be done this year because it's now that I learned that it does leave us open for legal action if someone were ever to come up and try to make those accusations. Um, to the other side, as I said on Monday at the HR committee meeting, um, as a board member, I have the trust information that's presented. Uh, I'm not a union rep and I'm not a HR person. So the information that's presented to us has to be what is given to them. And I trust that they're doing the investigation. Uh, I'm not going to say that, that any of these individuals that are being recommended for non-renewals uh, have done a stellar job that they are not warranted this because there have been people that have been given this uh, these layoff notices that have been above par. Um, so I'm just, I'm very weary about the board meandering into lanes that could present issues for us because as I said Monday, um, I do believe that if we don't do this, in some cases that leaves us open for future, um, for, for for future opportunities for individuals that when they do face this to make those kind of pushes that the board should do. The, the board should look into this because of this. The board should do this because of that. And that's really not, that's above our pay grade in some instances. So that's that's my only concern. Well, Steve Perry. No comment. No problem. Very Vice President Wright, you had your hand up again. Yes, I um, wanted to make a clarification about something that I said. The um, When I said that if an employee has a um, per performance issue, then they're not being considered as it relates to the reorganization anyway. That's why I, I keep pushing the point that um, if, if we, that th their non-renewal should only be about their performance. And I think that as a board member, it is our responsibility to look at these situations and make sure that we don't put ourselves in a situation where where we're not we're not learning from our past lessons. And um, we we're, we've been we have had some very tough lessons of late, and so that means you have to give a little bit more thought the decisions you're making it's not that we're trying to uh well i speak for myself i'm not trying to do administration's job because i do agree with board member strozier that that 30 dollars just doesn't cover it but i also took a took an oath to be responsible in my decision and if i feel in my gut that the decision that i'm making is not going to to uh, work to the advantage of the district, and I have to vote my conscience. So I respect everybody else's right to vote the way they want to. But in my gut, this isn't for me to do. That's not the decision I can make. So, uh, Secretary Ramsdale. Well, I, if you want to speak first, go ahead, Mr. Lester. I was going to suggest I would be. I would be glad to make a motion to amend the motion and that they would read, it would do it for each individual, but it would read for performance. But mm -hmm. I have to go back and amend the motion. Uh, uh, 
I don't know which one of us made it, but to amend the motion to um, uh, to read that we would take each one individually, but just read as as performance issues. So, something I well, first something I would say is that um, when we look at reorganization, even though we if we eliminate person A because of the, the you know they're in a position and then put somebody else in that position we can still reorganize economically with so what i'm trying to say is if somebody leaves as principal of a location we can still call it reorganization because we might not hire somebody new to fill that position we might move a an assistant principal into the principal position and just not refill the assistant principal position so we still reorganized economically. We still had less people. I think the only issue is if we were to hire somebody from the outside and then we could never say we lowered the amount of people we had on staff. You know, does that make sense? So like um, that I think is where kind of the economic necessity would come in where we'd be able to, to stand on that. Um, tech, uh, Vice President Wright? That's, that's not at all how I see that because it's sort of like we're putting two things together that don't belong together. The reorganization of the district doesn't have anything whatsoever to do with right. these people's performance issues. Mm -hmm. If they have right. performance issues, they need to be dismissed. We can hire off the street, off the wall, if we want to, if they are dismissed legitimately for performance issues. My only question my only concern is we don't put them together in the same document because that leads to a, a allegation of arbitrary and capricious behavior. You needed to get rid of somebody. So you said I have performance issues. Mm -hmm. We've been through this. Mm -hmm. We have been through this. So right, that's, that's, my point that's not at that, all what I was talking about. Right. right but my I, point I agree is, with your point. Okay, so we're on the same page, but I'm just saying it's not about us. It doesn't hinder our ability to hire, whether internally or externally, if right. we are reorganizing. It doesn't affect our reorganization at all. Okay. Secretary Ramsey, you had your hand up? Yes, I, I was going to say, I, I'd like to make a motion to amend the motion, and that the motion would read, um, we would consider uh, reasons for renewal or non-renewal according to performance. The motion is presented. Can I get a second? So moved. You would be the second, Danielle. She made the motion. Oh, I'm the second, sorry. <laughs> It has been moved and properly seconded that we amend the motion to eliminate um, economic necessity and speak directly to performance issues for non renewal. Only. Wait a minute. Performance issues only. Performance issues only. Monica, do I need to get a do I need to do a roll call vote for it? Yes. Vice President Wright? Yes, I agree with that. Treasurer Green? Yes. Secretary Ramsdell? Yes. Trustee McIntosh? Yes. Trustee Strozier? Yes. Okay. yes. Trustee Perry? Yeah. The motion passes 7-0. Do we need to go back through and re-vote on the individuals then? Yes. Okay, Ms. Washington, if you don't mind hitting the rewind button and starting this process over again, please. Do we still need to Absolutely. separate them then if we're doing them individually? Do you still want to separate them then? Yes. Okay. Okay. I have a question now. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, Ms. McIntosh? Because was everyone that we were voting on, were they perform? They weren't for, uh, for performance, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were. They, they were. were for performance. 
So we got, to, did we get to everybody? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just getting blurred here. Okay, I'm ready then. No. Okay. Ms. Washington? Yes. So uh, the first individual um, administrator recommended for non renewal of contract for performance is Matthew Lane, uh, current principal of Flint Junior High. And I think, um, and I think to make it easy, President, just ask the members to say yes or no because it's it's a little yeah. hard for me to tell the difference. Okay. Sure. So, board members, I will, as I call your name, please vote yes or no for non-renewal. Vice President Wright. Yes. Yes. So, yes. So, yes. order. Which person is this on again? Lane. Lane. Excuse Correct. Me. And Ms. Perry. Yes. Ms. Perry, yes, ma'am. So, yes, yes is a non renewal. Yes will mean. Okay. I, I'm not getting it. Everybody. Yes will mean non. Hello? Yes. Correct. Yes will mean oh. non renewal. Yes means non renewal. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Vice President Wright. Yes. President Green. Yes. Secretary Ramsell. Yes. Trustee McIntosh. Yes. Trustee Strozier. Yes. Trustee Perry. Yes. Is the expectation that he or she conducts the evaluation with fidelity, making sure they take into account all of the um, support and documents. Unmuted. And um, observations uh, that have been documented to. Actually, uh, Ms. Washington, that was a rhetorical question. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm I didn't so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean you to go through all that. <laughs> I apologize. I was just, that was a rhetorical question. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Understood. Is there any more discussion? Seeing no further discussion, the vote is on the motion for non renewal for Richard Robart. Board members, as I call your name, please say yes for non renewal and no to renew the contract. Vice President Wright. No. Treasurer Green. Yes. Secretary Ramsdell. Yes. Trustee McIntosh. Carol, I couldn't hear it for some reason. It blurted out. No. Trustee Strozier. Blake, I couldn't hear you. You're muted. Yes. Look at that knife. Yes. <laughs> I'm making a secret royal. Oh. Trustee Perry. <laughs> Trustee Perry. Yeah. I'm sorry, I, I couldn't hear. Was that a yes? I, I still couldn't make that out. She said yes. Yes. And it's a yes for myself. The motion passes five to two. The final administrator for um, non-renewal, final non-renewal of contract uh, for performance is Donald Whitman, current principal at Eisenhower Elementary. Is there any discussion? Betty, you're muted. Monica did it to me. Okay. No, you didn't, honey. Just kidding. Was there any discussion? Mm -hmm. Seeing no discussion, as I call your name, board members, please say yes for non renewal and no to renew the contract. Vice President Wright? Yes. Treasurer Green? 
Yes. Secretary Ramsdell. Yes. Trustee McIntosh. Yes. Trustee Strozier. Yes. Trustee Perry. Yes. I'm going to say yes for myself. The motion passes 7 0. Thank you, Ms. Washington. Thank you. All right, Ms. Sikelski. Thank you for unmuting me. Good evening, everyone. Tonight, I seek your approval to approve action item 11.21, Enhanced Deficit Elimination Plan Amendment, amendment excuse me, for fiscal year 2019-2020 through 2030 through 2031. Can I get a motion and a second? So moved. Second it. Question, Casey. It has been properly moved and seconded that we approve action item 1121, Enhanced Deficit Elimination Plan Amendment, fiscal year 2019 through 2020 through 2030-2031. Is there any discussion? Question. Yes, sir. Trustee Strozier. Um, Ms. Sikowski, you said that this uh, updated deficit elimination plan will go to through 2032? 2031. 2031. Um, I was under the impression that now that we have this uh, this bond that's been passed, that our debt would actually be reduced and we would actually be dead by then. Can you explain to us what happened? Sure. So um, if we can sell the bond prior to June 30th, we will be out of a deficit for fiscal year 20, the current year that we're in. Um, also, our projection is that next year we will still have a positive fund balance. However, it will be very small. Um, and then as we continue on, we do incur a deficit. It's based on our assumptions of how many students we're going to lose and how much foundation allowance we will gain. And um, when we kind of plateau off on losing students, that's when we start to build back our fund balance and we'll exit the deficit. So it really hinges on student count. Okay, so uh, this kind of goes into my next question um, because um, we're not recommending closing any buildings this year. Uh, what are some other uh, recommendations that are coming forth from administration on how we can kind of cut the debt and reduce uh, any effects we may have under the budget of making cuts in the classroom to kind of balance the budget. Sure. Um, I know one of the requests from the board is to look at possibly selling uh, the administration building, possibly relocating that. Um, there's also some conversation about, I have some ideas about our transportation that I will be exploring with Superintendent Stewart as we move forward. Um, but we're really going to take a good look at things that don't touch teachers, don't touch our classrooms to reduce those costs as much as we can. Um, we also have the um, central office employee audit that is being conducted by uh, Mrs. Washington. So you'll have that information too. And if there's any way that we can reduce in those areas, we definitely will be doing that. So those are some of our ideas as we move forward. And we're just going to continue to evaluate and see where we can adjust. Okay. And last question, Board President, uh, that I have uh, for the moment. Uh, now, the state is not requiring us, the, the uh, suggestions and the things that you've highlighted just now, they're not requiring us to give them a, this is what we're going to do with this DEP, this extended DEP at this time, or are you saying that uh, they're requiring us to come up with some type of plan to kind of support the DEP right now? Well, we do have some assumptions that are built in there. Again, they don't um, include any school closures as um, that is not where the direction that we want to take at this time. Um, there's some things, some expenses we incurred this year that we definitely don't believe we'll incur next year. Um, and again, you know, we have the assumptions based in there for student count and for foundation allowance. 
We did reduce the deficit from our first approved deficit. So we are headed in the right direction. It's just not moving out as fast as we um, as we would like. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you. Also, Mr. Strozer, just for clarification, just so the public, there's two different words that are being used kind of simultaneously that shouldn't be. So debt and deficit being two different things. So right. the fiscal stability bond that we passed will help eliminate our debt, which was two point some million dollars on from PNC. Our deficit, meaning our operating our, our operational negative, was about five million dollars a year. Right. So eliminating the debt still leaves us a $3 million roughly deficit. So what I don't want to happen is that the public to hear, because we passed the millage, we're no longer gonna have a deficit. That's not the case. Correct. The, the millage eliminates the debt. I just wanna make sure that, you know, using those two words simultaneously always makes me nervous because I don't want anybody to <laughs> think that we're trying to pull the wool over eyes. I wanna be very transparent and clear with everybody that um, the, the, the bond takes care of the debt and we're working as a as a unit to take care of the best so right. is there any further discussion seeing no further discussion board members as i call your name please say yes or no vice president Wright. yes treasurer green yes secretary ramsdell yes Trustee McIntosh? Yes. Trustee Strozier? Yes. Trustee Perry? Yes. And it's a yes for me. The motion passes 7-0. Thank you, Mr. Kelsey. Thank you. Do we have any remarks from individual board members? Secretary Ramsdell? Uh, yes, this is uh, not board so much as citizen business. Uh, so many of you are involved in so many things. There is a new project that was started last year, last couple years, and it's called Flint Fresh. And what it is, is they deliver fresh vegetables along with other things. And they have, um, they have started doing this and it is uh, going very well. Eventually, what will happen is uh, right now they are using uh, some some produce that's in stock and some that will be, but they will be they have farmers that have signed up, small farmers that have small signed up to have their fresh fruits and vegetables sold. And you can get a box, and it's it's really taken off, especially during the, this pandemic. Uh, you can um, you can buy you can have uh, $10 worth of vegetables delivered to your door. There's a $15 box, a $20, a $25 box. And so many of you are so involved in the community or even for yourselves. If you're interested, if you'll let me know, I will get you a phone number uh, for it. I don't want to take up our time right now with it. I just have to get it from my, uh, I have to get it from my husband. Yes, Daniel. Um, it's something different from what you were talking about, Ms. Ramsey, I'm sorry. Some of you will, um, if you just email me or something, if you're interested in it, uh, and the um, like I say, it will be as the seasons come in, it, it will be all fresh vegetables from farmers with hoop houses, et cetera, or just small farms. Thanks. Thank you very much, Secretary Ramsdell. Treasurer Green? I just wanted to ask Mo if she could resend that email with the link to do the read, the story reading, because um, I need to, I, I can't find it. So I, if she could resend that out. I would appreciate it. Okay, I was going to do that for all of you so that Great. we can get you guys to read. Okay, thank you. That's exciting stuff. That's awesome. I'm pumped yeah. about that. <laughs> Board President. Are you going to read one of your books, Treasure Green? Absolutely. Hey, Pretty Girl, by request of Vice President Wright. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> what an amazing opportunity. That's great. Um, Vice President Wright, did you have something? I saw your hand up. I didn't know if you were eating or yeah. just had your hand up. Wait. <laughs> that too, but um, I do want to acknowledge that uh, we lost um, both former and I think current employees to the virus. Um, John Bush, who used to be in our transportation department, uh, he was retired, I think, and then um, 
I'm not sure about Mr. Edwards, but I know he was at Nethercut as a behavior specialist. Uh, behavior specialist last yeah. year. I don't know if he was there this year. Yeah, he, he also was still, yeah. yeah, he was still employed yeah. with the district. Right. So I guess I would like for us to do a moment of silence for both of them, if we could. Yes, ma'am. Would you mind leading that, please? Okay. We may. We can start now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Blake. Is there any other discussion? Board President? Yes, sir. Uh, just want to give a kudos to our uh, superintendent and her staff. Um, I heard a lot of positive comments about the technology information that's been going out this week. Uh, just thank you for what you've done uh, to get make sure that our students are taken care of. Uh, our, administrator, our, our administrators, our building level our principals and teachers are doing an amazing job of connecting with uh, parents and students. And I think it's just great that uh, uh, given the time frame that we've had to be able to pull off this, it's definitely refreshing. And uh, I know that that's a kudos to our staff that we have here in Flint. Uh, it's just really, uh, I really just appreciate that uh, being in a house with two kids that go to Flint Community Schools and having them have that uh, readily available to them has definitely been uh, beneficial to our house. So thank you to uh, central office staff for all that you do. And um, um, definitely want to push, uh, we, uh, the National Pat Helena the Council of, of NPHC, um, we acknowledge that a lot of our students, well, all of our seniors this year are not gonna get the proper send off that they would have gotten in June. Uh, so we're going, well, we actually have a hashtag uh, 2020 FCS grad that we're coming out with next week to recognize all of our students that were seniors that were getting ready to graduate that will not have the opportunity to walk as, as we have in previous years. So I'm encouraging all of our board members that when the hashtag comes out, if I can tag you in it, uh, that we can recognize all of our students at, a, at a Southwestern for graduating this year. Um, Many students that I've talked to that may not even go to Flint, they're hurt by the fact that they can't graduate this year as, as they have previously. So just be able to put something out there that we recognize them, that we uh, acknowledge their successes, and we're praying for them as they go forward. It just would really mean something for them. So uh, when it comes out, I hope that board members will uh, tag it for them so that we can recognize our students here in Flint. President Lester, can I say something about our seniors? Absolutely. Go ahead, Mr. Stewart. So in, in recognizing that our seniors will not get their normal traditional um, senior activities, we are thinking about them and um, working with them so that we can do some things for them. Um, just like we have our story hour that goes live every day at nine, starting on Monday, um, every day we're going to spotlight a different senior. Um, so that we can celebrate them. And so that will be, um, that's in the works to start on Monday to go live. And so they'll have their own time. So stay tuned um, as to where we'll be able to spotlight a different senior every day, as well as some other activities that, um, that we plan for, that we have planned for them. So we want to make this um, transition um, as easy as possible for them, knowing that they're missing some of the traditional senior things. And so I did want to, I did want to share that. That's a wonderful idea. Wonderful. I have a question. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, Ms. Perry. Um, will the students be able to get their cap and gown? Yes, ma'am. We're, we're working on that. Okay, fantastic. I yep. hate to see the, the one year that children don't receive their cap and gown. So, okay, yep. great. I mean, we're still hoping and praying that they can have a traditional graduation. We haven't canceled it yet. Um, it may need to be pushed um, off a little bit. It may not happen um, like when it normally does. It may happen in June. It may happen in July, right? And so we're, we're keeping things open and just realizing that it may have to happen later in the year. We haven't canceled yet. So canceling is going to be like the absolutely last resort. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Treasurer Green? 
Um, I would just also ask that we keep um, Andre McGee in our, our prayers. He's a paraproid DTM. He's fighting the coronavirus in the hospital. He's a very close friend of mine that I became acquainted with when I worked at DTM. Um, so I just would ask that you guys okay. keep him in your prayers. Um, Andre McGee. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Vice President Wright, you had your hand up? Yes. Um, I saw on Facebook where another district is providing yard signs for their graduates. Is there any um, possibility that we can do something like that? Where the sign says, the, I don't know if it had, a, I can't remember, did it have a picture or, or it just had their name and said they were a 2020 graduate of that particular school district. Is there any money anywhere that we could find to do something like that for our seniors? That's, that's very interesting that you would ask that. Um, makes me think that you were a fly on the wall at my house earlier today. <laughs> <laughs> but I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> because because we, were, we were discussing that, um, whether it's, I know um, there there's a photographer who uh, has stated that she's willing to take the pictures of seniors and and put their mm -hmm. pictures on yard signs and but the the example that came up was to put them out in front of southwestern um so that was one idea um that was kind wow. of from the wild and mm -hmm. then the other idea mm -hmm. was to be able to give to give it to the seniors so that they can put it out um, in their yard and so those were some ideas that were tossed around today. Um, mm -hmm. Not a definite decision that was made, but that did come up today. Okay, well, I'd like for, for us to try to do something, because um, I like the idea of it being in their neighborhood, because, you know, mm -hmm. not a lot of people are going to pass by that school. Mm -hmm. But if it's on their block, people that ride past, they see it. So, you know, uh, which I don't know any, I have no idea what that kind of stuff costs, but I, I, I would really like to see you guys look into that. That's it for me. Secretary Ramsdell. Yes, uh, usually you see them uh, in the student's yard. And mm -hmm. that, and like I say, you know, even on a busy day, not that much traffic in front of uh, Southwestern, but they're usually in their yard and it says, this is the home well, the ones I've seen has said this is the home of a proud graduate from Southwestern High School or whatever, but to have their picture on it too, because really some of their neighbors don't even know that they're graduating, but that would just be, that would just be a great celebration. And if it's money, I would bet between all of us, we can find people and everything that would be happy to work with us on covering that cost. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, uh is there any further discussion? Um, yes, excuse me. That brings me back to my um, thing. If you did end up having to cancel the graduation, maybe putting some little Jaguar paraphernalia along with the, you know, a little gift bag for them. I was just oh, looking at some stuff online last night. So I get Anita, I didn't call you, but I, sh I, I didn't call you. I'm gonna leave it at that but that kind of coincides with an idea that I was having. So I think um, with the yard signs, I think the yard signs should be in their yard because you want to give them a sense of pride. It's their accomplishment. So that's all. Agreed. Um, Anita, really quickly, I sent you a text message, but somebody just asked about who they should reach out to um, to get any of their learning packets and information. Are you having students reach out to you specifically? Is there a number just so people have it so people know all mm -hmm. of that? Yes. Um, if they have email, they should email um, me at superintendent at flintschools.org. Once again, that is superintendent at flintschools.org. Um, those emails are coming to me and I'm responding to the community as I receive um, as I receive that email communication. Perfect. And then what, uh, can you just kind of do a quick recap of what we're doing currently for anybody who needs to get some educational material right now? What's their next option? What's the best? What can they do currently? Yes. So starting last week, um, teachers 
uh, made contact with um, all of their students that they were able to make contact with. There were some families that we were not able to contact with as numbers have changed and those telephone numbers were not updated um, at the school. Um, so they have been making contact with all of the all of their students um, by phone, um, by email. Um, I know some teachers have been participating with their students using the system of Class Dojo, which is reaching out to them to see what their needs are. And so we have started with our um, our academic learning plan. And so for those students who have technology and they have internet. Um, they have been utilizing um, one of the online platforms that they were already familiar with because they were already using it at school before uh, the, before school closure uh, happened. And so those kids are online and they're interacting with their teacher and they're doing their work online. For those students who um, do not have a device or they do not have technology, the schools are open one day a week so that they can go to the school and they can get a learning packet and they can continue with their learning via a paper packet. That is a temporary solution because we are in the process of getting of checking out devices to those students who do not have technology at home. So if they do not have technology at home as their teacher has been um, contacting them, the teacher has made note of that and there is going to be a, a, a day um, each school will have their school open one day a week where they can go in and they can check out a device. Um, if, if the parent has internet at home, they will be able to utilize their device and access their internet at home. For those families who do not have a device or internet, we're working through the process of giving them, checking out a device to them, as well as giving them a hotspot. Uh, the hotspots were uh, approved for us to purchase last week by the board, and that order was placed. So we're waiting on the hotspots to come into the district. Our rep from Sprint has told us that we have a uh, two-week turnaround. And so those devices, uh, the hotspots should be in our district within two weeks. Once we receive them, we will catalog them, inventory them, and then we will check those out to our families. So that way, all of our students can be taken advantage of the online platform and we can limit our contact with uh, the public and their contact with us as far as them having to come in each week to get a paper packet. Awesome. That is wonderful. Okay. Great. Um, so our next meeting is a committee of the whole will be held on Wednesday, May 13th, 2020 at 6.30. The meeting notice with the po will be posted in the district website at flintschools.org for public participation. participation. Seeing no further action, the meeting is adjourned. <laughs>